question is, uh, how have things changed over the course of my career, and how do we address the uh, people's viewpoint that things haven't changed too much? Well, I think, again, you know, in honesty, the, the impact, the outcomes for patients hasn't changed that much over the past number of years. So, for example, if you look at the data on tumor treating fields that were approved by the FDA for newly diagnosed glioblastoma in 2015, well, according to that data, the five-year survival went from 5% to 13% which obviously that's 160% improvement in five-year survival uh, in, for patients that were participating in that study. Now, there are many people who have criticized that study and look at that and have some issues about the study design and so forth, but I think we can look at that as some he headway. We've made some progress. And there are other studies that are, have been published recently or are being published now to demonstrate that those numbers are, are pretty real uh, in that that outcome, say a 13% five-year survival or say a two-year survival in the 40 to 45% range is about where we are now uh, with sort of cutting edge treatment and patients that are treated at centers where people have a lot of experience and you have experts. Uh, so I think those numbers are better than they were, you know, 20, 25 years ago. So that, that's sort of the, the cumulative effect of a number of things and not just tumor treating fields. That's the effect of temozolomide. That's the effect of better surgeries. That's the effect of better understanding of the genetics of tumors so that patients are treated with a little bit more precision. Uh, in the sense that they're, they're maybe not treated with as aggressive a treatment as they might have received, so they have less toxicity, uh, which is an, is an important thing as well. Um, but over the course of my career, the things that have become standard that were not standard are limited brain radiation. It used to be whole brain radiation, and we've now cut that down to just treating the tumor plus a margin around the tumor. Uh, secondly, which you mentioned before, is temozolomide was added to uh, radiation in 2005, and that improved outcomes for patients. And then the drug bevacizumab was approved in 2009, and that um, improved quality of life for patients more so than quantity of life. And then tumor treating fields were approved in 2015, uh, which uh, again is probably adding a modest benefit to overall outcome. So those are the 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 sort of demonstrable progress items that have been made. Uh, however, again, it's not good enough. So the, uh, the, the bigger part of the progress, so if you were to read the literature on uh, brain tumor or neuro-oncology, the vast majority of things you would read have to do with the understanding of the biology of the disease. So the way I like to describe it to patients is that it's a complicated problem, which is obvious, and part of the reason it's complicated is because we have two things, two major things we have to do. We have to reverse engineer the problem, meaning we, we have to reverse engineer it and understand what's going on. And that's not just with tumor cells, but it, more recently, we're identifying that it's the immune system that's going haywire as well. So you've got tumor cells that are growing, you've got an immune system that's malfunctioning. So those are two big things that we have to reverse engineer, understand how they're going wrong, and then we have to forward engineer a solution for those problems. Um, so those, I, I try to explain it to patients that way and uh, to help them understand. I try to explain to them that uh, they are part of the solution, and we are part of the solution. The people participating in this uh, project are part of the solution. Uh, it won't get better unless we do it. No one will make it better except the people that are participating in the whole endeavor of making these diseases go away. Um, problems are solvable, 
and they, you know, barring the limits of physics, uh, we can solve these problems, and we will, uh, you know, because they don't, all of these things are items that we can see, we can measure, we can identify under a microscope, we can see, uh, and we know what the molecules are. We're still figuring out what all the different molecules are that, that create this problem. And those are all physical things, and we can control them. So it's still a matter of learning to the degree that we need to understand the problem so that we can engineer solutions for the problem. And we will. It's, it's just it's kind of slow. Way too slow for somebody who's in the middle of suffering through these diseases.